The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, uh, hi, welcome to today's webinar. So uh, we are doing this uh, simulation at the speed of design, uh, which is featuring Altair's uh, solution of uh, SimSolid. So uh, I'm actually Yi Chao. So uh, Ray from Altair will be presenting uh, most of the content. So actually, uh, we are doing, uh, we are, uh, I'm Yi Chao from Ivy Tech Solutions. So we are uh, one of Altair's official reseller. So in conjunction with Altair team, we are delivering today's uh, webinar. So yeah, more on, uh, Ivy Tech Solutions. Yeah, next. Okay, so uh, before we begin, I'll do a brief introduction of us. So uh, again, we are Ivy Tech Solutions and we are an official channel partner for Altair. So meaning we are their official reseller for their products and solution. So our specialization is more on the engineering, design, and manufacturing side. So we have do have quite a bit of uh, clients in the manufacturing field. So our company has over in 20, 20 years already. So we provide uh, computer aided technologies, software and solutions. We call that CAX for short. So we refer them to family technologies like your drafting, 3D design, modeling, analysis and simulation. And together with all related end to end solutions and services, uh, next. And so what do we offer? Uh, we strive to provide end-to-end -end solutions based on our customers' needs. So uh, let me break down into the three pillars of design, use, and make. So under design, uh, we provide 3D modeling and drafting. And for simulation and analysis, we specialize in simulation for our plastic injection molding, uh, CFD, and FEA services. So uh, you know, these are software that perform simulations that you reduce the need of your actual testing and you predict your products and design failure in real world scenarios. And under make, we provide CNC, post-processing and very popular these days, 3D printing. And lastly, under application, we cover both software and hardware implementation. So we can customize your training and uh, of software and systems and product and also lastly, product data management solutions. Next. So uh, here are some of our portfolio of clients. Uh, so over the years, our clientele have expanded and our customers are from a wide variety of industry and segments. Uh. So we have government agencies, Institute of Higher Learning, Research Institutes, Oil and Gas, Semiconductor, Electronics, Plastic Injection Molding, and Consumer Products. This is where we have been offering value driving and end-to-end -end solution. So uh, now I'll hand over to uh, Ray now. So if you want to get in touch, this is our uh, Ivy Tech's uh, contact detail and look us up on the internet also. Yeah. So I'll hand over to Ray. Thanks, Yi Chao. Um, can you guys hear me clearly? If yes, can you please type three on the chat? Okay. Right, so um, a bit of half rules. Uh, your mics will be muted during the webinar. Um, but if you have any questions during my presentation, you can feel free to type it in the chat. So you see your chat, um, you see your questions there, you can type it, your questions there. Or if you have any uh, remarks, you can also put it there as well. And after the end of the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to um, uh, you, I need to unmute you, so raise your hand first, then I can unmute you guys and we can have a conversation. Okay, so a bit of a bit of background of myself. I am um, Raymond. I am a graduate from USM in aerospace engineering. Uh, before joining Altair, I was with a CAE. I was with a uh, CAE engineering consultancy firm. Uh, we specialize in uh, automotive body strength stiffness. So basically, uh, all the analysis that you actually perform on a car, the crash, the strength, and VHB, we uh, um, combine actually do that. So back then, I was involved heavily in the uh, vehicle development projects for German automakers, Japanese, and also Chinese automakers. And currently, uh, I'm in Altair. 
as a technical specialist, providing trainings and also helping customers to adopt our software. Okay. So who is Altair? Um, our vision is to help customers drive decisions by leveraging on the convergence of simulation, high performance computing, HPC, and also artificial intelligence, AI, right? So you can see the, the core business, uh, our core business is basically uh, tied to three things, simulation, HPC, right? And also AI, right? And we are uh, now um, promoting this as a convergence where actually you don't, uh, it's not enough to just perform one of them, like for example, simulation. Uh, if you want to speed up simulation, definitely need HPC as well. And now with the um, emergence of AI, you can actually use AI to actually drive your simulation as well. Okay, so we call it a data driven and then there's a simulation driven. So both of them can be used together to actually improve your product development. Okay, so a bit of uh, our background, we are actually listed on the NASDAQ. So these are our numbers. Uh, we, are, we have close to half a, uh, half a billion revenue in 2019. Uh, we have 3,000 staffs all over the globe. So you can see that we have 25 of, uh, we have 86 officers in 25 countries. And um, yeah, but the HQ is in Troy, Michigan. Uh, ever since 1985, we are currently serving more than 11,000 customers globally, right? So these are some of our products, uh, portfolio. We have solutions in data analytics, in simulation, uh, for multiple physics, whether it's strength, whether it's electromagnetics, uh, acoustic, vibration, um, fluids, we have uh, the product to actually cater to all kinds of uh, physics simulation. We also have uh, uh, strong designing and uh, modeling and visual visualization software. We also have in Internet of Things uh, together, coupled together with data analytics, we have HPC and also there's a special program uh, called Altair Partner Alliance, where using our license, you can actually access to um, softwares that are not in our company. So be competitor software or um, other independent software, you can access them through our Altair Partner Alliance here. So these are our 11,000 plus customers worldwide. Some of them you can see are mostly in the automotive. So that's where we actually started. We started in the automotive uh, industry, catering to them, the, catering to their engineering needs, then we actually branch out to aerospace, civil, and so on. So with the um, acquisition of our data analytics software, now we also serve the financial services. We also serve um, companies like uh, uh, like banking and so on, all under financial services, and also some of the industrial goods, and also uh, uh, some of the uh, customer retail also. So we also serve a uh, wide range of industries now, okay. So let's go into the main point of today, what is SimSolid, All right? So the title of the, the uh, webinar is SimSolid Simulation at the Speed of Design. So why can we simulate as fast as we want to? You probably will not hear the audio. Let me just play you the video so that the audio is visible.
Okay. So that was a brief intro of what SimSolid can do. So um, as you can see, the the model just now is actually a pretty big stage wagon. So uh, using SimSolid, we were able to simulate that as well. Okay, so now let's go into the details of SimSolid. Let me just enable my pointer. So what are challenge challenges uh, in in current uh, in the current age of simulation, right? Or in 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 product development, so as you see here, um, the product development cycle now is actually very short. As competitors try to get their products to the market quicker day by day, we also need to keep up with the with the pace of them, right? So, uh, product development needs to be shorter already nowadays, um, and not just that. To add to the complexity, the model is now more complex, right? You are trying to create something that is lighter, something that is smaller, uh, but still perform the same way that it does before, right? So model size has probably increased. You have more number of parts now. It's, it's probably more complex, okay? And uh, one of the trends that we see now in simulation is that uh, we cannot just leave the simulation part to a department to handle. For example, the designers will design the, the designs and then they'll probably send this design to a simulation team to perform that simulation. So it's no longer that case. Uh, simulation now needs to be driven by the designers as well. Okay, so everyone has to be able to use simulation software and use simulation to actually drive their design. Okay. So our test seems solid is designed for that. It is a structural simulation software that operates directly on original unsimified CAD, right? And it does not create a mesh. If you're familiar with um, with simulation, we have uh, we have something called the finite element analysis, where you actually need to um, model your parts with with what we call finite elements, or in other words, called mesh. Okay, uh, that will actually take a lot of time to set up, but with SimSolid, you don't actually need to do that. Okay, and you don't need to simplify your CAD as well. You can use your original CAD that is ready for manufacturing to perform a simulation. Okay, and best of all, it provides results within seconds to minutes. Okay, so to be more simply, it is a unique um, technology, right? There's no machine required, so you just work fully on your um, final CAD, your full fidelity CAD. You, uh, we have good connections in our our. Um, seem solid to actually assemble your 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 parts, so uh, and the connections will be accurate, right? And you get results within minutes. Okay, so seem solid is capable of sawing large of parts or hundreds of parts. It can be sawed within minutes, and not on a supercomputer or not not on a HPC, but just on your ordinary laptop. So the laptop that you use for designing. Right to open your SolidWorks, to open your Katia or AutoCAD can be used to actually run simulations like this. Okay, so you can see here this is consisting of uh, two thousand parts. It can be solved within a few minutes here. All right, so it also eliminates the traditional roadblocks that is normally encountered during FEA meshing, where you actually perform the uh, you create a mesh for the final element analysis. Okay, so normally parts like this where it's cons uh, assemblies like this where it consists of uh, thick and small parts. Some will be thin, some will be big, some will be small. Um, different methods of meshing needs to be done traditionally, but in SimSolid, you don't need to worry about this. You just read your CAD in, set it up, and then run. So there's no, um, there's no need to think about, should I mesh this with a shell element? Should I mesh this with a solid element? Uh, what's the size? What's the size of the mesh? And so on. And with traditional meshing, you probably need to close a lot of all these small holes here because with the uh, existence of all these holes, it will actually affect the quality of the mesh, which will then affect the quality of your results. So here, you don't need to worry about that. You can just use the cat as it is. You don't need to close the holes or anything, right? And it can be solved, uh, can be used to solve uh, complex geometries like this. If let's say your parts are consisting of lattice structure like this, Uh, sorry, are you guys seeing my slides? Oops. Okay. 
Thank you for notifying. Let me. Are you guys seeing the slides now? If you can see the slides, please confirm. Um, press two on the keyboard. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, then I need to start again. Right, so uh, again, let, uh, very quickly. So um, the current trend that we see now in, in just stop this. The current trend that we see now in uh, simulation is it needs to be quick, right? So your product development needs to be quick. That means your simulation cannot take a lot, uh, uh, cannot take a very long time. It has to be quicker than, than before. And uh, this is to keep up with the pace of the competition, right? So we are trying to get to the market faster and faster. So simulation needs to be done fast. You need to get results fast. You need to know whether your um, products are ready to market. So product development cycles are now shorter. Uh, complex models are now more complex and the model size are probably bigger now. It may not be bigger as in the total size, but then um, in terms of the number of parts contained inside an assembly, it's going to be larger, right? Because you, for example, now we have um, IoT where we have more parts inside and uh, all this to be accounted for when you actually perform the simulation, okay? So model size and capacity has become larger and um, simulation is not now performed by the by a specific simulation team, it has to be handled from the designers as well. So the design engineers to come up with a design that is already, um, well, I wouldn't say perfect, but close to perfect from their very end. Okay, so when they actually produce uh, the CAD drawings, it has to be okay in terms of fulfilling all the engineering requirements before being passed to the simulation team for further verification and also for the testing team to perform the validation, right? So uh, designers have uh, have more responsibility now, right? So SimSolid is the perfect um, structural solver for that because we perform on original unsimplified CAD and there's no mesh that needs to be created, okay? And we get results within seconds to minutes, right? So to put it more simply, um, SimSolid is a unique game-changing technology. It doesn't require any mesh. It can um, assemble your parts with high fidelity connections. It means our connections are accurate. We have connections for welding, for spot welding, for reverts, and, and so on. And we get results within minutes, right? So minutes here is not, it's not that it's soft on the, the cloud or it's soft on a supercomputer. It is just soft on your on your normal desktop, right? Uh, so the normal desktop that is that was used to um, design your software, uh, design your set, your your parts. For example, your SolidWorks or your Katia or your AutoCAD. Right? If the if your computer can open that, that means you can open and run SimSolid as well, right? So. Yeah, for example, here the about two thousand parts here is just being solved within minutes here. Okay, so um, SimSolid removes the traditional FEA roadblocks um, when you have parts that are complex like this, consisting of different sizes, um, different thickness. Uh, it doesn't. It will require different kind of uh, treatment, uh, meshing meshing criteria when you actually mesh these parts, but because there's no meshing at all in SimSolid, so we don't need to consider. Uh, different mesh criteria for different parts. We can just read all the cats in, uh, assemble them, apply the contacts, and then just run it, right? Small features like this are normally um, hindrance to the mesh because it will actually affect the quality of the mesh and also will then cause accuracy to drop. So with the holes uh, here, you don't need to actually close them. You can read it into, into seam solid and we can just assemble this and run, okay? complex geometries like this, where you have lattice and so on, uh, you'll take a long time to mesh because of the small size of them, but uh, it seems solid, no meshing, so no no headache on, on meshing this uh, this part here, okay? And also um, small surfaces like this, we call this the splinter surface. This will actually have effect on the size of the mesh, which also will affect the, the uh, computational time of your simulation. So here, 
uh, for sim story you don't need to worry about this you can just use it as it is okay and most importantly when you actually design um design your assembly sometimes you are not properly sometimes the parts are not properly aligned whereby there will be, there will be some parts that are uh, penetrating for example here and some parts there will be some gaps right for simulation we actually need to make them um on the surface so they must be on the surface not not penetrating like this or have have gaps uh that's the traditional simulation but for for sim solid we don't need to worry about that you can just use it as this okay so with sim solid use um very early on you'll be able to generate multiple design iterations right so not just the designing team uh providing the the designs out but then you need some one to two weeks to validate the, the design you can validate the design um, within minutes at most within half a day you can, you can get to uh, validate the design and then feedback to the designers and then they'll churn out the second design and then so on okay so it is best used in the early stage of designing where you need to um, where the designers need to know the the results quickly because they want to finalize the design right they cannot afford to wait one to two weeks for the validation of the traditional FEA to, to come up with the results. So it's best used during this stage here. And it's not, seems like it's not a replacement to the traditional FEA. All right, so you probably need to perform some virtual validation or some testing validation as well. Seems like it's not there to replace that, but it's there to actually reduce the development cycle, which in the end, help you save costs, okay? All right, so um, right, so, so some of the use cases we have seen from our customers that they actually get to design better faster, okay? They get to reduce the lead time by 20 to 100 times. And this is a true case study. It's not just a number that is uh, being put here, right? They really have reduced the, uh, the, de the development cycle or the design cycle from four weeks to just one to two days when they perform simulation on SimSolid. Right, so we simulate. That's why we say we simulate at the speed of design. As soon as the designers come up with the new design, we'll be able to simulate and give them the results within the same day. Right. Yeah. So this is a a roadmap of how is is uh, is being used traditionally. When designers come up with the cat, uh, they will feed it to the simulation team, which will actually require a long time to defeature, right? Because for Traditional FEA, you actually need to simplify the parts. You cannot assume all the radius or all the chamfer to be there. Then it's to simplify. And also modeling has in you need to actually mesh it and then assemble it uh, using connections and so on. Okay. So this will actually take time. The more complex your model, the longer time it takes. And when you actually produce the CA results, it'll be too late, right? They need to freeze the design already before they go onto the, the, the second design cycle, right? So when you have the results for them, it's going to be too late. They actually cannot change the design anymore. Okay. So with SimSolid, uh, we promote simulation driven design where uh, we can actually give you, give the designers results as fast as they give us the cat, right? So once they give us the cat, we'll be able to feedback to them and they do the design iteration, update the design, and then they fit the new design. We validate again and then we give them the final results. And of course, with all this uh, speed in, in simulation, we actually get to save uh, the production time, which in the end will also um, give benefits to the cost, right? So Altair was acquired, uh, Altair, has, Altair has, has acquired SimSolid back in October 2018. And as you can see here, it's, it was uh, uh, pretty, it was already a quite a mature software, but it, it was not uh, properly developed yet because that they are small, so they don't have the, the capability or the resource to actually develop. But since Altair has uh, acquired them, we actually place a lot of effort to develop the, the, the software. And you can see with every release here, we actually improve on the software, okay? So there has been already 10 major releases in two years, all right? And these are the full capabilities of SimSolid. As you can see here, we can run modern analysis, linear statics, uh, we can also run uh, non-linear uh, if you need to perform some dynamic responses, frequency response, transient response are there. Random response is also there. You you can also perform thermal analysis, right? If you need to perform initial relief, bulk pretension, we have it as well. 
and um, most recent um, solution that was launched is the fatigue. So we can now also perform um, fatigue simulation or fatigue analysis in SimSolid, right? Uh, materials wise, we have a database of material in, in SimSolid and uh, most of them are isotropic and also we have one or two elastoplastic materials, right? So um, this will cater to most of your steel and also plastic parts. Uh, we can also assume materials to be rigid. That's where you actually want to just have the mass represented, but uh, assume that to be non-deformable. Uh, non so you can actually as assign them as a rigid material as well. We have fluid bodies if you want to consider fluid in your vibration analysis. Okay, And of course, we can also uh, add our own material. So if the user wants to add materials, we also have the user accessible material there. Okay, And the latest to the family is the autotropic material. We also have this now. Okay, connections wise, we can do all, all types of contacts. So you have bonded contacts, sliding contacts, and then separation as well. We can uh, create bolts, port welds, right, seam welds, adhesives, uh, reverts, all these are available, joints. And uh, when we look at results, uh, that's your typical results there. You can look at displacement, stress, strain, uh, velocity. If you're running for model analysis or frequency response, you can actually look at the frequency and mode shapes, right? We can look at model partition factor. And then for the boats, especially if you're doing boat pretension, you, be, you would like to know about the boat forces as well. So we also can look at boat forces, okay? And these are some of our customers already using uh, SimSolid. So you can see um, some from automotive, um, some from the electronics, right? And then some from, uh, yep, these are so automotive. These are the electrical appliances, okay? Uh, Brompton bikes. So you can see that um, SimSolid is used in uh, normally assemblies or, or components that are complex, right? Has complex as a car, where you have a lot of components inside. Even bikes, you also have a few hunger components, okay? And so on, right? So this is a example from Renault. So they shared this in our um, technology conference. Okay, so there are um, the 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 automakers are normally kind of traditional, right? So they will normally depend on the traditional FEA. They will some they will. It's hard for them to adapt to adopt a new technology that doesn't require mesh uh, to produce results. Right, so they have their own standards already. Uh, it's it's hard for them to actually switch, but for Renault, they are actually willing to try because they they understand that um, using mesh to build your model requires a long time, and they are trying to reduce this development cycle. So that's why they tried SimSolid on the front subframe here and also the rear subframe, where it's consisting a lot of welds, right? A lot of weld lines that need to be modeled. So here they managed to reduce the um, the time to build the model, as you, as you see here, from uh, about four weeks, right, down to just uh, uh, half a day or one day, right? So they can then do this very quickly. And imagine if this is for one design iteration, then you have several designs that needs to be simulated, okay? So this is actually a huge reduction uh, for them, right? So running time is, is as quick as the traditional solver, and then when you look at the results, uh, of course, results-wise, um, once you get your simulation done, means once you have modeled it quickly, and then you run quickly, then you have more time to actually evaluate the results, right? Uh, the the uh, the other fallback with traditional FEA is a lot of times are already spent in modeling the the or, or building the model, okay, building the model for simulation. And that leaves you very little time to run. Okay, running also will take some time. Uh, after that, in total, you are only left probably with one or two days to actually evaluate your, your simulation or evaluate the, the product. So uh, with such short time to evaluate, then you actually have um, trouble to improve on the design, right? So with SimSolid, you get to improve the design uh, better because you have more, simply you have more time to evaluate. All right.
Okay, another uh, case study here by Jaguar, they also perform the same thing. Uh, here's a model where they actually uh, simulate on this, right? So you can see this is the mesh that is required for uh, this part here, the shock tower detail meshing, as you can see here. Uh, the more number of elements that you see here, right? The longer time it takes to calculate. So if they want to model this very accurately, they will need a long time to actually simulate this. Okay, so this is the result in SimSolid. We can actually get um, this assembled in very quickly and also get similar accuracy. Um, the other way that SimSolid can be used is, now this is a model that is based off uh, a, a cutoff, cutout of the original full car, right? So instead of, uh, instead of simulating the entire full car, which will take longer to run, they just cut out a quarter of this. Right, so they just cut out this and then they just simulate this. Then you will save some simulation time. So that's one way to use it. Uh, you simulate has what is uh, in actual condition, right? Although this is a cut out, but this is also from the actual car, right? Where it's being welded, uh, it's being spot welded to the actual uh, car parts. But here is another way that seems like it can be used where you actually um, simulate the, the condition during testing. So this is one of the test rate, right? Um, normally test rate condition are, are less, uh, lesser tests because um, the, the test engineers doesn't know how to use simulation, right? So they will just uh, judge from experience whether this setup is okay or not, whether the test rate is, is gonna perform what it's supposed to do without actually validating it, right? So with, with SimSolid now, it can be used by anyone right they can actually easily the test engineers can actually set this up and then just see whether this test rig assembly is going to be okay for this part or not okay right so these are some of the results uh, where you can see that we get um, results faster 1.5 hours in sim solid compared to three days in conventional or the traditional finite element methods okay and the accuracy is within three percent so the error percentage error is actually very low so we can actually use SimSolid to predict the analysis, right? Uh, yeah, so again, it's uh, time saving again, 20 minutes in SimSolid compared to two days in conventional FE. And most importantly, the result correlates with testing, okay? So the result correlates with testing, uh, right? So this is another example where we actually can solve it very quickly here, okay? So another, uh, Example from Brompton Bike, they have 480 parts here meant to solve uh, 480 parts with 600 connections between all the parts, right? And they managed to solve this pretty quickly within a few minutes. So I'm going to skip the video here because I'm going to show you the um, the demo later on. Okay. As you can see, this is a SolidWorks where they actually launched SimSolid from, from the SolidWorks itself. Okay. There is a button. Uh, let me just go back here. Okay, so there's a button here that launch open the SimSolid and it exports your CAD into SimSolid environment. And that's how you essentially set up SimSolid here. Okay, so I will skip this video because I want to show you the, uh, the, uh, uh, a live demo later. So to save time, I just skip this. Uh, the other example that you have seen just now in the video is this stage wagon here. Okay, so this stage wagon here is consisting of more than 7,700 parts, okay? Uh, 60 minutes to set up because of all the parts, they need to detail all the connections. So it took 60 minutes to set up. If you're not particular with the connections, you can just assume automatic connection and it can be done within minutes, okay? But if you want to make sure that your model is accurate, uh, all the connections are properly connected and uh, and according to the actual, actual condition, then you need to actually go and look look at them because you have so many parts of course it takes a long time to set up uh, but then to solve this is only just taking 30 minutes if you're using traditional software then uh, traditional FEA then probably will take longer okay. so let's go into uh, sim sorry itself I'll show you how to how does it look like can you confirm that you can see the sim solid Mm, yep, okay, thank you. 
right so just Sorry, let me just uh, move this platform controls first. Can I move it? It's okay. So now this is SimSolid, uh, the SimSolid interface where we, you see that most of the buttons are grayed out, right? Because we haven't read in anything yet. So uh, before you read in anything, uh, all the functions here are, are going to be grayed out. So let's read in a cat. Uh, I'm going to use this pull up bar here since everyone is uh, staying at home. They probably will miss the gym a lot. Okay. So when you read the cat in, you can see that um, we automatically detect whether your cat, uh, your parts has any in, uh, overlaps or not. That means there's intersection or, or penetrations. So uh, you can go on and and scrutinize them, see where they actually actually um, penetrate and so on. So this part, for example, is gonna is penetrating with the, of course, surrounding parts here. Okay, but it's just a minor penetration because, I mean, in in designing, you probably cannot design perfect, right? There is bound to be some some penetrating surfaces. So I'm just gonna just close this. That's just a warning sign to alert you. Uh, with that, this dialog box will pop up and we can set our automatic connections here. So from here, it will actually create connections between all the parts based on the gap and penetration tolerance that we set, okay? So here it says that anything that's within one mm, if there's a gap that is within one mm, you will actually create a connection. If there's a penetrating, uh, if there are penetrating parts that is within one mm tolerance as well, we are also gonna create that connection. Okay, so I just click OK, and you can see that it will um, create the entire connections now. So I can go into connections here, and I can show you these are all the connections that is detected based on the tolerance that we have set earlier. Okay, so everything that's connected, and uh, you can also see how many parts are there. Uh, there, there are thirty three parts inside this assembly here. Okay, so this is a pull up bar, of course. Um, we would like to set materials to it, right? So under assembly, we can just put in our materials here. You can see that we have the material library inside. Okay, so all your steels and so on. Uh, for, for simplicity, I'll just put everything has steel for now. Okay, apply to all parts. And now you can see that um, these are applied steel material. So next, what we want to do is we want to create a linear structural uh, load case. And I want to create a constraint here. So these two plates are going to be bolted to the wall, right? So those these two sections here cannot move. This is what we call the immovable support. It cannot move, OK? And then we also want to apply force on the handlebars, right, to simulate uh, to simulate a person actually pulling them down. Okay, so I will just put in, let's say, 2,000 kilo newton, about 200 kg, force down, right? And then this is good to go. So you have assigned the material, you have specified where is it going to be constrained, and then you have applied the force. Then what you can do now is just hit run from here, right? So it will solve. Here, so you can see the status at the bottom, right? Analyzing the connections and then uh, processing the parts, right? So there's pass one, pass two, and pass three. Uh, this is to improve the accuracy, okay? The, num the higher number of passes, the higher the accuracy it is. We can set this as a setting uh, from here, right? So that's done. You can see that we got the results within 28 seconds, right? So let's look at the results. Let's look at stress. Okay, so you can see uh, here's the stress. You can also play on the animation. Okay, of course this displacement is uh, scale up. Even through true deformation, is only very low here. Okay, so this is a scale up deformation. All right. So then you can see that the maximum stress. Let me just stop this. The maximum stress is here. 
is about 216 megapascal here. All right. So let's try some other load cases, right? Instead of putting the front bar, let's put the side and let's put the back here as well. So let's try, what you need to do is you just right click and copy, okay? And then you go to the forces here and you change the force to be applied on the side now. Okay, so now it's hand, now it's the force will be hand, uh, will be applied on the side handles. Okay, and then let's right click and then create another one. Let's copy this and then now instead of the side, let's put it at the back here. Okay, put it back here. All right. So then you have your front, then you have your side, and also the back. So let's try. Now let's run this. Uh, for the sides, okay, performs the same thing, three passes, and then uh, plots the results, All right? Okay, and before that, before we look at the results, let's run the third load case. So, same thing, three passes, and then plots the results. So it's very quickly from the time I read the cat in to the time I set up and run is only less than two minutes, right? So now this is the initial result. Let's look at again the initial result, the stress here. All right? You can do a bookmark of this has a has a shortcut. So anytime that you are in other results, can launch you can launch it back to the first result here. Okay. So when you're in the second load case result, you can see the high stress is here. Okay. Uh, and then for the third, for the third uh, load case, the high stress is at here, right? So that's how fast you can evaluate. Uh, but the true speed is uh, the the more the more load cases you create, as you see here, the first run uh, took twenty eight seconds, right? The second run here only takes 15 seconds, right? So uh, the subsequent runs are going to be faster, okay? So the first run is always going to be longer, uh, but then subsequent runs are going to be faster, right? So so the more low cases they create, let's say structural four, five, six, all those are going to be solved very quickly, right? Now this is only a one design study, right? So let's say from the structural one that we see here, right? You can see that the high stress is at this point, okay? And probably it's because this angle is too sharp, right? Or this uh, this triangles, triangle rib here is actually too small. So let's say you go back to your CAD software and you redesign this rib here, okay? So that's where it comes in. I read in the second design, which is an improvement of the first one. When you read the CAD in, uh, we automatically apply the same settings. You can see here structural one, two, three applied to design study two, right? Design study two here. So the same thing has been copied from the previous study onto design study two. Okay. You perform the same checks. So if you are satisfied, just close on that. And you also perform this automatic connection uh, to the parts that are not connected. So you can see here some parts are already connected because we redesign this rib here. So now this rib doesn't have any connection. So that's why this pop up and prompts us to create connections for this, right? So I'm going to connect. And now everything is properly connected again. You can see here, the, even the new parts are connected, right? So we just need to apply um, material to, the, to those new parts. So if I show parts without material, right? These parts here are without material because they are new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them and apply steel to them, All right? Apply to select the parts, okay. So now I right click and see if there are any more parts without material. No, nothing. Everything is now applied steel, All right? So these are all the parts. Now, all the structural here are already copied. So you can see this is the force for the front, then at the side and also at the back. All you need to do is just come here and say you run this. Okay, so you do need you don't need to set up again. 
uh, if you have multiple design studies, you can just read the CAD parts in and we'll copy whatever they have set up before onto the new the new uh, CAD, CAD geometry, right? So now you can, uh, now it's solving, you have solve structural one, solving structural two, okay? All right, and then you will solve structural three. Right, so it's good if you have uh, various designs that you want to evaluate, right? Just put your cat in and uh, set it up once. Set, your, set it up once and then you can reuse whatever they set up onto the other new designs, right? So let's look at the results now. This is the first result, from, uh, the first structural, structural one result from the design one. And then you can just jump to Design study two to look at how it performs now. Okay, so this is design study one where we can see a high stress here about 216 megapascal. When I jump to design study two, it has not improved. The high stress is still here, but then it's um, within the limits, right? It's no longer at this sharp corner there. Okay, so you can go and uh, uh, look at the results for other load cases as well. So that's the benefit of having this design studies here. It basically can see here, we name this as project, okay? This is a pull-up bar project. You can have your first design here, second design here, and then third iteration, fourth, and so on, okay? Everything will be copied has, uh, the moment you read your cat in, right? Whatever settings that you've done before, you'll be copied. If there are new parts, you just need to reassign the material, reassign the connections, and then you're good to run. Okay, so that's how fast SimSolid can, um, that's how SimSolid actually speeds up your development cycle because we have all these features here to help you. Okay, right, so if something can solve as fast as that and doesn't require meshing, most of the time people ask, is it, is it um, accurate, right? Is it accurate enough? So NAFEMS, which is an independent body for, uh, the final element methods, this is based in the in the States, in the US. Um, they have actually, they're independent, so they, they don't side with any of the solver manufacturers. Um, they have, they perform independent studies on all the softwares, and then they give their, their true judgment there. So you can see they've done so with SimSolid as well, uh, the, the benchmark here, and they compare SimSolid results with the traditional FEA. Okay, so traditional FEA has been here for a long time, uh, it, it's deemed to be accurate. So they have performed the same, right? So they have performed the same, um, uh, the, the same load cases with SimSolid as well. And they can see, you can see here that they actually have a very good correlation, right? Most of the errors are less than 1%, only a few cases where we are still within limits of the 5%, okay? So SimSolid can be used Especially if you if you think about it, uh, you require a long time to actually set up your model in the traditional FEA, but in SimSolid is very quickly uh, set up and, and run. Okay. Uh, this is another test that we we did on our our site here. Okay, with with a customer, so you can see because for me I I'm also from the traditional FEA, so for me to see something like this, I also need to test it myself. So that's why I collaborate with a customer, they perform the actual testing, right? And they they perform the actual testing, they know what's the result because they measure the strain gauges. And from the experiment, they can see that um, in testing, we can, they recorded uh, 1.5 milli strain here for, for this gauge here. And then they perform the same simulation using traditional FEA and also with SimSolid, right? So you can see the stress contour are basically the same between the traditional and, and SimSolid, right? You can see the same stress contours there. And for results wise, in terms of strain values, you can see that SimSolid uh, showed 1.41 milli strain, while for the traditional FEA is 1.4 milli strain. Okay, so we have good correlation with the finite element methods, okay? All right, another example here is uh, on the natural frequency or the uh, vibration. So you can see here, this is a uh, a model, which is a golf club, and they perform model analysis on this. Basically, we're trying to find the natural frequency of, of this uh, golf club here, 
Okay. So you can see uh, the driver head, basically uh, the frequencies from Team Solid, you can see that it matches pretty well with the frequencies from uh, from the traditional FEA solver. Right? So here we are using our own FEA solver, OptiStruct. Uh, at mode 7, you can see that it's happen, happening at 2000 Hertz, here also happening at 2000 Hertz. And here are the comparisons. You can see that the percentage of difference or the error is actually pretty, pretty low. Um, less than one percent most of the time. Here is only one point two eight, right? So it's still pretty close. About three hundred three thousand three hundred hertz. We also three thousand three hundred hertz. Okay. And of course, the time to get your results. Uh, OptiStruct took longer to solve because we are meshing this with very fine elements. Right, you can see here is second order elements, uh, 1.93 million, close to 2 million elements. It's actually a pretty big model compared, uh, considering that this is just a golf driver head, which is actually pretty small. Right? Seems sorry, we, we control accuracy by the solution passes here. So uh, as you see the status bar at the bottom just now, the more passes it, it, it does, the more accurate the result is, is going to be. Right? So uh we took nine minutes to solve here in sim solid optistruct to 1.5 hours of course model preparation as well sim solid here basically you read in your material there's no other connections right there's only one one part here read in your part assign the material and you can run so it's pretty fast here comparing to optistruct you actually need to match this right so it's longer to set up longer to solve uh so size total time here is uh, 2.5 hours or two and a half hours versus 10 minutes in SimSolid, right? Uh, this is another uh, validation done by Richard King. So Richard King is the founder of Creo Simulation. So he founded Creo Simulation and he has then um, uh, retired and now he is an independent or freelance consultant, okay? So he performed a test with SimSolid because he also doesn't believe, so you need to test on SimSolid. Uh, here he uses real life, real real case studies, right? So like actual case like this where we have uh, a coupon with a hole here, right? Even uh, parts like this, right? Which will normally be hard to capture in in finite element analysis because of the complexity, right? And from here you can see that we actually get correlation. Let me just go to the table. Oops, tables on top. All right, so they, they, he actually did this summary table so we can focus on here. You can see that for all the parts, uh, error in maximum stress be actually pretty good, right? About 5% there or so. So um, uh, in a nutshell, our results are comparable with the traditional finite elements, right? Even though they took longer to set up, uh, we are faster, but then our results are comparable, okay? Let me go back to the slides. Hope you're seeing the slides. Okay. Right. So uh, that is all uh, regarding Sim Solid. So I hope that you guys can actually join this. Um, let me minimize this. Okay. So hope you guys can join this simulation revolution where we are trying to promote simulation driven design. Right. Um, simulation can no longer be just a privilege that is only available or accessible by the simulation engineers or by the structural engineers. It has to be adopted throughout the entire um, the entire product development cycle. So from designers to simulation engineers to test engineers, they must be able to perform simulation. And SimSolid actually gives them the capability and the ease of use to actually do that, right? So yeah, try to adopt this simulation driven design in your workflow and you see the benefits of uh, having a shorter product development cycle, okay? So that is all from me. I am open to any questions if you have, thank you. All right, let me see if we have questions. Um, a question here. When the step file has been read, read in, I need to reassign all the materials. 
um, yes, you need to reassign the materials because um, we, as you see here on, on SimSolid, we have our own material database. So even though you have assigned materials in, in SolidWorks or in whatever CAD file that you have, it's normally just the name that is there, right? Probably telling this is steel, this is aluminum and so on. So we actually need the material properties of them, which are only available if you read it into simulation software. Okay, so we can retain the name, but um, as long as the name exists in SimSolid, then we can do a, a mapping to it. But if the name is not there, then probably you need to set it up. Okay. But you only need to do this once. As we have seen uh, in my demo just now, you need to do it once. And then the future variants that you read in, future improvement, future iterations, design iterations that you read in, the materials are automatically applied. Unless it's a new component or a new part, all the other components are directly assigned as per the original material. So you don't need to do this every time, right? Any other questions? I think not. I think the the guy from Secret Lab have left is just us. Okay. Yeah. So this one is from Ivy Tech. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So Marcus, Jasmine, you have any questions? Uh, uh, then I will stop recording. No? Yeah, yeah, okay. Reading, yeah, what about uh, reading in native cat file? Yeah, we can read native cat file. So, yeah, we can do that. No problem. Actually, we prefer native compared to step or IGF. So, you can see here import from file. Yep, you can see these are the files that we support. Oh, when he left? Uh, I think I put the left. question and answer slide he left already. Oh, I think this one is, oh, this, okay. I think this one is my, my, my team. Uh, my my not, not oh, sales no. engineer Marcus, I, uh, I think he he, he used the same link, so I think that's why the name is just me. So just oh, okay. the, the business owner of uh, Ivy Tech there. One is, Mar one is Marcus. Huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yep, any more questions? Uh, otherwise, we can... Mm -hmm. guess, yeah. We can hold another session if you have any questions on SimSolid. Uh, no, ah, we use this webinar platform. <laughs> Potential customer, yeah, can. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have the recording of the webinar. I think Tom will give us or if you have any possible customers. Um, yep, yep, I have. But let me edit first since I didn't show my slides earlier on. Oh, yeah, you can, you can me, crop. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can cut yeah, this. Let me edit first and then I'll send you the editor. Okay, sure. No, you can. Okay, thank you. And the, and the video won't be played. Uh, so I played a video as now. It won't be played. Uh, you it's not recorded la. Oh, okay la, no, la. I think the, so probably the video I'll send you separately. The the slide in the demo la. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess uh that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Jeff, are you there?